Okay, now let us look at the second component of the uh, cardiovascular system, which is the blood. But for to these lessons, we only focus in terms of the blood cells. So blood cells consist of red blood cells or erythrocytes, white blood cells, also termed as leukocytes, and platelets, termed as thrombocytes. Okay, so if you remove these three kinds of the cells out, the remaining solutions is termed as the blood plasma, where we can get what are the things? Dissolved ions. Okay, we can get dissolved ions. We get the right, O2, CO2 that dissolve in the blood plasma. Okay, as well as what else? We have, we have the blood plasma nutrients, waste. Okay, so those are the things, the proteins, okay, also inside the blood plasma. Okay, uh, so but today we're going to focus in this lesson, we're going to focus in these three types of the cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, as well as the platelets. Okay, so now take five minutes, and uh, only five minutes, again, uh, one minute, label the cells now. We have three kinds of cells, label them now. Okay, so how we differentiate them? So first of all, no nucleus, biconcave. So this one must be red blood cells or erythrocytes. Okay, second, you can see that with the uh, nucleus, okay, around with, with a nucleus, so this must be white blood cells or leukocytes. And then something like a fragmented cells, right? yeah, something like uh, fragments like this, and very small, so they are platelets. Okay. So we start with the first one now, red blood cells. What's so special about the red blood cells and why they are red in color? Because they have these color pigments called hemoglobin. Okay, we have these color pigments called hemoglobins, so that's why red blood cells is red. Color. So the main function of hemoglobin actually is to transport oxygen. Okay, but don't forget red blood cell also can transport CO2. But for today, the major function is to transport the oxygen. Okay. So when we form red blood cells, when in the fetal stage, okay. So red blood cells actually are formed in the liver because our bone marrow is not fully developed yet. Okay, but by the times we are born. The liver now stop uh, producing red blood cells, so it will be taken away by the bone marrow. Are you clear? So because our bones start to develop already, so therefore we will be able to use the bone marrow. Okay, we have the stem cells in the bone marrow to help us to produce red blood cells. We're going to learn about the stem cells in our next semester. So red blood cells they do not live very very long. Okay? roughly about one hundred twenty days only. So once we are uh, end of the lifespan, we're going to break them down or rupture inside the splints or inside the liver. And hemoglobin, we are going to recycle them. What we're going to recycle, we actually take back the iron ions, okay? And reuse by bone marrow to make a new hemoglobin, I mean, a red blood cell to make a uh, new hemoglobin. So heme units, okay, the heme units will be degraded. So it will secrete them as a bulk responsible for the color of the feces. Okay, uh, how about the globins? The globins will be, if you look at this, hemoglobin, heme groups, the iron, we recycle back. The, the remaining heme units, we degrade that. How about the polypeptide, the alpha and beta globin? So we hydrolyze them. Okay, we hydrolyze them, so form amino acid. So this amino acid will be used back, okay, to recycle back. Okay, uh, so what are the adaptations of red blood cells? So what are the adaptations of red blood cells for their functions? So highlight this because it's a very, very important question always asked about this. What are the adaptations? So first, if we look at this, red blood cells, they have very, very small diameter, roughly about 7 micrometer only. And still remember, we talked about the capillary. Capillary diameter also set about seven micrometers. So means that small size allow them to squeeze through the small capillary. Are you clear? Okay, that's one. Second, also very important when the cell is small, 
the diffusion distance actually shorter. So it means the hemoglobin actually close to the membranes of the red blood cells. This first. Second, in order to accommodate more hemoglobin, we want to eh, accommodate more hemoglobin. So the red blood cells actually, when during they are still young, they do have the nucleus of mitochondria and the plasmid reticulum. But when they become the mature stage, they remove the nucleus, degrade the mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum. So therefore, they provide more spaces for hemoglobin per unit volume. Are you clear? Of a per cells, a per, per red blood cells, we can actually accommodate more hemoglobin. So that is also why red blood cells have a lifespan about 120 days. Why? Because they do not have the nucleus, they do not have the DNA, so therefore they cannot replace back those uh, enzyme, those protein, they have been degraded, we won't be able to replace that. So the cells actually die off. Okay. And red blood cell had a biconcave disc. With the biconcave disc, basically they increase the surface area to volume ratio. Okay. So it means that we have more surfaces for the gas exchange. And the membrane of red blood cells is elastic. Elastic basically means that they can squeeze through this. Right, uh, you can squeeze through this uh, narrow capillary. Okay, uh? And last, you can see that the presence of the hemoglobin is very important. If a red blood cell without hemoglobin, red blood cell actually useless. Okay, so I make a summary and I draw out the diagrams, then you will be able to understand more. Okay, uh? So I, I use a red color. Okay? I use a red color to draw the red blood cells. So first of all, what we're going to learn? Diameter. What is the diameter? About 7 micrometer. So why is it so important about 7 micrometer? So first, if a 7 micrometer means that they have the, they are small. What's so important when they are small? When they are small, so first, they provide the short diffusion distance. Why? Because every hemoglobin molecule are close to the surface membrane. Second, when they are small, so they can squeeze through. Okay. They can squeeze through the blood capillary. Okay, so they are small. Okay, uh, next. If you look at the cells here, second. So no nucleus, mitochondria, and ER. Okay, no nucleus, mitochondria, and ER. What's so important about this? So they provide more space. More spaces to accommodate more hemoglobin per cells. Are you clear? Sorry, per cell. So therefore, we can increase the, I mean, the uptake. Oh, sorry, increase the transportations of O2. Can you see that? So next. Third. So by concave, the shape. So means that if you by concave, you increase the surface area. When you increase the surface area, so it means that you increase the rate of exchange. Okay, gas exchange basically. Are you clear? Between the cells and the tissue flips. Okay, because more surface area. And last here, we need to know 
the membrane is elastic. So again, you allow the red blood cell to squeeze through. Okay, a small capillary. Okay, lumens. And last, they do have the hemoglobin, the presence of the hemoglobin. Okay, to transport the oxygen. So basically, this is the features of the red blood cells. Clear? Okay. So five features, but normally question won't ask up to five features. Okay. They will be up to a bit like two to three features. So if your features they rank one, two, three, four. So the most important one is are uh, these three first. Number two, number three, number four, number five. Are you clear? Okay, uh, so the features of a red blood cells, you have to arrange it in this order. Okay, number one, number two, number three, actually you can actually, uh, not, no need to be in order, like, you, can, you can write number two, number three, number one, okay? So as I said, that red blood cells, they have a very small diameter, seven micrometer only. So basically, hemoglobin hemo, molecules near to the cell's membrane, resulting in a short diffusion distance for the gas exchange. So the rate of gas exchange is high. Okay, second, so small diameter allow red blood cells to squeeze through a small capillary as well. Okay, uh? so no nucleus mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum. So this feature provide more space to accommodate highlights, not to accommodate O2, but accommodate hemoglobin first. Very important highlights. We accommodate hemoglobin, it's not to accommodate O2. Are you clear? Okay, uh? when we have more hemoglobin, therefore allow more oxygen to be transported per cells, okay? Now, next, third. So, red blood cells are biconcave, so increase the total surface area of the red blood cell, okay? So, increase the rates of the gas exchange, okay? So, how about the membrane of red blood cells? They are elastic. So, the membrane elasticity allows red blood cells again to squeeze through a small capillary, the lumen's capillary, and the present hemoglobin allows the transportation of oxygen from the lung to respiring tissues. Now, be careful, guys, when you talk about this transport oxygen from where to where. Are you clear? Okay, uh, it's good to put in, again okay, from lung to respiring tissues. Okay? So now, how we actually get, okay, uh, from the cells, stem cells, get into these erythrocytes. If you look at the process here, we start it from the stem cells. So this stem cell actually have nucleus. Can you see that? So it slowly develops so during the development, they can see that they do have the eject, eh, ejections of the nucleus. So they remove the nucleus from the cells. So when they remove the nucleus from the cells, they form the erythrocyte. So it means that they still eukaryotic cells. Now, red blood cells still eukaryotic cells because in the lifespan here, they do have the nucleus originally. Are you clear? But towards the maturations, uh, when they become matured, then you will see that this. Uh, nucleus and uh, mitochondria ER become absent inside the red blood cells. Okay, clear? Now, we look at the white blood cells. So, white blood cells actually involved in the defense and mechanism, eh, involved in the defense, me uh, defense mechanism uh, to, to, to counter an X or to, 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 how do you say that? To remove the pathogen. Okay, uh, so white blood cells are known as leukocytes. Generally, they are quite large, okay, larger than the erythrocytes. And one thing difference between the white blood cells and also, okay, look at white blood cells, and also the, the red blood cells, one main, um, one main features here, white blood cells, they have nucleus and lack of hemoglobin. if you compare both of them. So white blood cell, where we make them? Again, we make them in the bone marrow. So about the quantity, okay, is less than 1% of the blood volume, okay, unless infection takes place. Or another reason, because of what? 
because of the disease. For example, leukemia. Okay, so you have these extra productions of the white blood cells. So in our syllabus, we need to identify three types out of five white blood cells. Okay, so what are these three types? Highlight first, you need to know neutrophil. You need to know how to differentiate lymphocyte and how to differentiate monocyte. So I'm going to tell you guys how to differentiate them. So first of all, in terms of neutrophils, neutrophils, they have the fragmented, can you see that? They're fragmented or multi-lobed nucleus. The nucleus is not one big circle, okay, or one big spherical structure there, but they are multi-lobed, interconnected multi-lobed nucleus. Okay, and then how about the, uh, the, the shape? The shape will be circular. Can you see that? So they are granulocytes. So granulocyte means that they have the granule inside so they can secrete the enzyme okay, later in the cells to destroy it, okay, the pathogens. So neutrophils actually is a phagocyte right now. So they will carry out the phagocytosis. Okay, huh? Now next, how about lymphocyte? Lymphocyte, you can see that they have a relatively large nucleus. Can I see that large nucleus? We'll take out about like 90% of the space. Okay, 90% of the space of the cells. Are you clear? So lymphocyte. Lymphocyte actually they do kill the pathogen, but not by phagocytosis. So they are not phagocyte. Okay, so we have two types of them. They have the we have the uh, T lymphocyte. And also B lymphocyte. Are you clear? So what how they kill? They don't carry out phagocytosis, but they release. Okay, for example, T lymphocyte release toxic substances to kill the infected cells. B lymphocyte is the one that actually release the antibody. Are you clear? They release the antibody to kill the pathogen. Next, monocytes. Now, monocytes are relatively larger compared to the rest of the cells, relatively larger. So, they also have a very large nucleus, but the nucleus, if you look at the structure of the nucleus, you can see that a bit like U-shaped or C-shaped nucleus. This is monocytes. Now, monocytes, when they are in monocyte form, they don't have a specific functions, but this monocyte, when they leave, Okay, the blood uh, capillary. Okay, sorry. Okay, when they, they, they leave the capillary and they will develop, eh, they are located in the tissues, they will have, develop into the macrophage. So this macrophage will carry out phagocytosis. So it means that in the very, very rare for us to detect macrophage, in our blood. Are you clear? Because monocyte, yes, in the blood, you can get monocyte. Be careful. Huh? In our blood, we can get monocytes. So these monocytes, when they squeeze out, okay, or, or they, they pass through the gap in between the, the, the endothelium, then they will go enter into the organs, in the, in the system, in the organ, in the tissue fluids, then they will develop into macrophage. Macrophage carry out phagocytosis. So monocytes, they have something like premature, so they don't have any specific functions yet. Are you clear? So these three you need to know. So very simple based on their nucleus. Okay. Now, next, we do have another two. Okay, one is a basophil, another one is eosinophil. So both of them are not in our syllabus. Basophil, you can see that they have this a lot of granule. Can you see that the granule? So because they are granulocytes, right? granulocyte basically means that they have a lot of this granule. Okay, so this granule actually involved in what? So basophils, the granulocytes here, the basophils, they stain violets or purplish color dots. Can I see that purplish color dots? Because due to the stain that they take up. Okay, so we call them as a basophil. So these basophils involved in the allergic reaction. Okay, most of them involved in the allergic reactions. Okay? 
eosinophil also we can see that they have a lot of dots can you see that the granule they have a lot of granule but this granule take up the orange or pinkish color so therefore we call them as an eosinophil involved more to the parasitic infection okay but these two are not in our syllabus so you do not need to actually know how to differentiate them in terms of the features and also their role okay uh? so basically eh? so for what we need to know only neutrophil i highlight here neutrophil lymphocytes and monocytes and in fact we do not need to know them okay we do not need to know them at this moment because when it come to immunity, we're going to learn them again. Okay, these three of them. Okay, uh, so take one minute, identify the white blood cell with the correct functions. Okay, match it. So complete table 6.6 .6 by stating the types of the white blood cells. So look at this. They destroy microorganisms but not phagocytosis. They are antigen specific. So they produce a uh, antibody so those that produce antibody is called b not beta sorry b lymphocyte or b cells perforins is t lymphocyte yeah so answer given already in this case lymphocyte okay so they are active in phagocytosing bacterial and are present in the large number in the past of the wound, okay? So these cells are not able to renew their lysosome once they use it, and they will die after having phagocytosis, okay? Uh? So in this case, they are neutrophils, okay? Neutrophil. So they are chiefly, okay, they're responsible for allergic and antigen response by releasing chemical histamines cause the dilations of the blood vessel. And this histamine is responsible for widening of the blood vessel, allowing a more uh, blood flow to the injured sites so that we can have more permeable. They make it wider, okay, and dilate so that more neutrophils and clotting proteins can help to stop the infections. Okay, uh, so in this case, the answer is the basophil. So basophil mostly involved in the allergic reaction by secreting the histamine. So again, this is for your informations only, okay? So in our AS syllabus or even the whole A-level syllabus, we don't learn basophil in detail, okay? So next, they leave the bloodstream, the bloodstream and become the tissues macrophage. So this is very, very clear cut. The answer must be more no site, okay? So macrophage carry out phagocytosis, but they have more long life. So they present the piece of pathogens to T-cells so that the pathogen may be recognized again and killed. So this one, you're going to learn in immunity in detail. So at this moment, no need to worry about this first. So just understand that monocyte is the one that leaves the bloodstream and then enter into the tissues, enter into the uh, organs, and then develop into the macrophage. And macrophage carry out phagocytosis. Okay? And primarily deal with the parasitic infection so this one must be eosinophil okay uh? so we're going to learn them a little bit here and there when we come into immunity again okay uh? now next leukopoiesis leukopoiesis is a formation of the white blood cells okay so regulated by production of interleukins and also the colony stimulating factor those are the hormones or hormone like chemical that stimulates the cells to form leukocytes. Okay, so we have two different kinds of leukocytes. One is, uh, sorry, uh, the, the, what we call this, uh, the, the, the pathway, one is a lymphoid, another one is a myeloid, okay? So myeloids form neutrophil, lymphoid, from the, from the name lymphoid, we form the lymphocyte. So if you look at these uh, diagrams, so we have hematopoietic stem cells, Stem cells is the one that keep on renewing themselves. Are you clear? So their role is just to multiply, multiply, and then some of them specialize into the myeloid stem cells. Some of them become lymphoid stem cells. Under myeloid stem cells, they continue to, okay? The process is not like one, I mean, it's a one step. So slowly develop. So slowly they develop, okay? So develop to what? So for myeloid stem cells, they develop into just now the neutrophil. Can I see that? Okay, they also develop into the monocyte. 
So from monocytes, it developed, eh, and the tissues there, they developed into the macrophages. Can I see that? Okay, uh, but how about lymphoid? Lymphoid stem cell will develop, uh, they, they won't pass through this developmental pathway, so they actually develop into the B lymphocytes or T lymphocyte. Are you clear? Okay, uh, so these diagrams you need to remember, no needs, just understand that against where we get these stem cells, they are in our bone marrow. So they were developed. Okay, so there are two kinds. We have the myeloid stem cells and lymphoid stem cells. Myeloid stem cells develop into the neutrophils and monocytes. Okay, and monocyte can develop into the macrophage in tissues. How about lymphoid? Lymphoid, very simple. Lymphocyte, either B or T lymphocyte. Okay. Uh. So now, take one minute to identify all the white blood cells in figure 6.18 now. Okay, so uh, we need to know neutrophil. Okay, and we need to know the monocytes. We need to know the lymphocyte, this tree. Okay, how to differentiate them. So first of all, look at this. multi lobe nucleus, right? One lobe and a second lobe. This one also many lobe nucleus. Okay, and then you won't see a very dark purplish color dot and you don't see a very prominent, uh, what we call this, uh, pinkish color dot. So, very clear cut, this one must be neutrophil. Okay, we have two neutrophil here. Okay, sorry. Okay, and then you can see that this eh, nucleus, they're quite large, eh, relatively larger. Can I say relatively larger compared to other white blood cells? So in this case, okay, and also the nucleus, a bit C-shaped. Can you see that? It's C-shaped, right? So this one must be monocyte. Okay, monocytes. Not macrophage, huh, guys. You're going to see macrophage. Okay, very, very rare. You can see macrophage inside the blood picture, okay? And this one, can you see that the nucleus is quite large, take up about 90% of the space. So this one must be lymphocyte. But we won't know which kind of lymphocyte, yeah, guys? We won't know whether it's a B lymphocyte or T lymphocyte, okay? And how about these two? Okay, use different color because you do not need to know them. This one, you have the very, very promising uh, Violet dot granulocyte in this case. So this one is the basophil. Okay, basophils. And in this case, you can see that the dot with the pinkish okay, color, okay, red color, pinkish color, because they take in the eosin, the state. So that's why we call it an eosinophil. Okay, uh, so the blue color is the one that you need to know. Okay, but in this diagram, can you see something very small here? What's this? This is actually the platelet, okay? The platelet. So the rest will be the red blood cell. Eh? This one is the platelet. So now we look at the last part of the blood cell, which is the platelet, okay? Huh? So what is the function of the platelet? Platelet actually is not really a complete cell. Are you clear? They are not really a complete cell. Later, I will show you guys why we don't say that they are the complete cells. So basically, platelets also known as a thrombocyte, even though they call it as a cell, but they are not a complete cell because they don't have a nucleus, but they actually are the fragments of a large cell known as megakaryocytes. So what their role? Their role actually involved in the clotting process, okay? Forming a temporary cell when your blood vessel is damaged. So you can see that if you compare to the rest of the cells, they are very, very small only. Can you see that? So those are the platelets. So in the process of the stem cells, can you see that we're still having this hemato, eh, hematopoietic stem cells forming this mega chyoblast and then slowly develop into this mega chyrocyte. So this mega chyrocyte become fragmented. So this fragments term as the platelet. So they are not a complete cells, but they are fragments from the mega chyrocyte. Okay, huh? so again, you do not need to know the detail about how the formations of the platelets. Okay, if you're interested to know, you can always find more information uh, online. 
So again, the summary of the blood cell transport in the blood plasma. So we have the red blood cells. Okay, then we have the neutrophil, eosinophil, and basophil. And then we have lymphocyte, monocyte, as well as the platelet. So for our syllabus, we are, what we need to know for this topic, erythrocytes, you need to know the structure, functions, and adaptation. Okay, for erythrocytes. Neutrophil, lymphocyte. Okay, these two, you need to know they are, how to identify them. Okay, for neutrophil. Uh, lymphocyte and monocyte. You, not, you need to know to how to identify them and also their roles. Okay, huh? so platelets, nothing. Platelets just need to know the functions. So generally, they involve in the clotting. Okay, huh? so with this, I have done for the blood cells. Do you guys have any questions?